Black Township Public Library, and you are watching Storytime Anytime. So we always start Storytime with our hello song, and while we sing our hello song, we're going to do a couple of the words in American Sign Language. The first word is hello. So you're going to put your hand right to the side of your head, just like you're saluting, lift it up and away. That's how you say hello. Now for friends, you're going to take your two pointer fingers, and they're going to give each other hugs because they are best friends. And that's how you say friends in American Sign Language. Are you ready to sing? Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. It's time to say hello. We sing it one more time. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. It's time to say hello. Good job. So with Thanksgiving coming up and a lot of us traveling and spending time with family and friends, it's the best time to sing the more we get together. This is one of my favorite songs and we're going to do a few of the words in American Sign Language. The first word we're going to do in sign language is for more. So you're going to take your hands, you're going to make duck bills, just like that. And they're going to face each other and they're going to give each other little kisses. Mwah, mwah, mwah. And that's how you say more in American Sign Language. The next word we're going to do is together. So you're going to make your hands a big fist and you're going to pretend you're stirring a great big pot of stew. There we go, together. Now we're going to do happy. So you're going to do flat hands, put your palms facing towards you and just do little circles in front of your chest. That's happy. And now friends, which I know we should remember from our hello and goodbye songs, our pointer fingers, our best friends, and they're going to give each other hugs. Are we ready? Here we go. The more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. Cause my friends are your friends and your friends are my friends. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. Great job, everybody. That's one of my favorite songs to share with people when we get together. It's a great song for all about being friends. All right, our first story today is called Let Me Fix You a Plate, A Tale of Two Kitchens. And this is written and illustrated by Elizabeth Lilly, and it's published by Neil Porter Books. This is a great book to talk about as sometimes we're traveling to different places and different family members for the holidays um, and how different families celebrate in different ways. Once a year, on a Friday night, my family leaves the city and drives for hours and hours. They're there on the back seat. Oh, sometimes going on long car rides is really hard, isn't it? To a mountain in West Virginia, my mama opens the door into the cool, dark night let me fix you a plate, she says. So they call this grandma, Mama. What do you call your grandma? Do you call her grandma or Nana or Granny? My kids call their grandma Grammy and their grandpa Poppy. Mama's midnight kitchen is warm and light with blue tiles on the floor and cat plates on the wall. Mama's morning kitchen is clean and bright with sausage sizzling in the skillet, blackberry jam on toast, and tractors on cups. My papa drinks his coffee with cream but no sugar, and daddy does too. My dad and his dad, daddy and papa with the same coffee cups. So there's their daddy, and there's their papa, and there's their mama. Outside, the stray cat who lives in the old trailer meows and morning mountain fog wrinkles and rolls. Later, my sisters stack vanilla wafer cookies. Mama pours the pudding and I cover the top with slices of banana. Then we eat it all. Mmm, banana pudding. 
Three days later, we leave Mama's house so early it is still night and drive and drive and drive south and south and south to a little orange house on a patch of scratchy grass in Florida. We get out of the car and the hot sticky air hugs us close. Then Abuela runs out and hugs us even closer. Ay comidita, adentro comence. There's food inside. Come and eat, she says. Look, they have an orange tree in their backyard. In Abuela's midnight kitchen, and Abuela is Spanish for grandma, white tiles feel cool under my feet, and aunts and cousins and uncles and neighbors talk over each other above my head. I crunch to stonays and scoop arroz and slurp flan and fall asleep at the table. My mom, still laughing, say loud Spanish words that I don't understand. Outside Abuela's morning kitchen, red ants climb over scratchy grass and bite my feet while I pick naranjas with Abuela Abuelo in the yard. Abuelo means grandpa, and naranja means orange. We drink them as juice and eat arepes with queso blanco. My mom helps her mom to fry the corn cakes, corn flour cakes. My mom and her mom cooking and chatting together. Abuelo teaches me Spanish words while I look around. Boca means mouth. There are little wooden houses from Puerto Rico, keys hanging below. Nariz means nose, a shelf of nothing but frog figurines, glass and stone and wood. Oreja means ear, and a sliding glass door between air-conditioned room and the sticky summer heat. Do any of your grandparents have collections that they display? My grandma used to have a collection of spoons hanging on the wall. In the evening, Tio Elmer, Tio means uncle, makes coquito, and the grown-ups drink the coconut rum punch that looks but doesn't taste like eggnog. I hide behind the couch with my book while my cousins and aunts and uncles dance salsa and merengue, and Abuela finds me and gives me tostones. Three days later, we leave the little orange house and drive and drive and drive back toward our house in the city. We stare at the changing scenery, tummies full, hearts fuller, already missing the salsa, the sausage, the toast, the tostones, ants and aunts, arepas, abuela, naranjas, bananas, mountains, mammoths, cats and fog and scratchy grass. We reach our house tired and hungry. I look at mommy. She is tan and brown and bags under her tired eyes, missing Spanish words and oranges on trees. I look at daddy, pink from sunburn, messy hair and stubble chin, missing mama's meals and quiet mountaintops. I'm hungry, I say. So mommy mixes flour and daddy beats eggs and I set syrup on the table. Mommy's midnight kitchen has bright lights and warm wood floors, plantain pressers next to potato mashers. Outside our windows glow like gems seen by sleepy passing cars. Inside there's warm soft talk and air that smells like waffles. Daddy works the waffle iron. Mommy forks waffles onto plates, and their three little pollitos, hungry little chicks, gobble them up. And then drift off to sleep. In their soft feather nests. And there they are all, back home at their own house after their vacation, visiting their grandparents one in West Virginia in the mountains, and one down in Florida. The end.
Our next story is Bear Says Thanks, and this is written by Karma Wilson and illustrated by Jane Chapman. And this is published by Simon & Schuster. This is part of Karma Wilson's Bear series, which are all so much fun to read. All alone in his cave, Bear listens to the wind. He is bored, 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 and he misses his friends. He does look lonely, doesn't he? I could make a big dinner, a feast I could share. But he looks through his cupboard, and the cupboard is bare. Then Mouse stops by, there's Mouse, with a huckleberry pie. And Bear says, thanks. It's an awfully tiny pie for a bear to share with a mouse, don't you think? Bear says, goodness me, a delectable pie. But I have made nothing, he adds with a sigh. Then they hear, hi-ho, and they both see hair with a big batch of muffins at the door of the lair. What kind of muffins do you think hair has brought? I think they could be chocolate chip or blueberry maybe. What's your favorite kind of muffin? Hare hurries in from the cold rushing wind and the bear says, thanks. Of course, says Hare, then he points to the door. Here comes Badger and he's got even more. What does Badger have with him? <gasps> Burr, says Badger, as he trumps inside. He sets down his pole and he smiles real wide. I'm back from a stroll at the old fishing hole. And the bear says, <gasps> thanks. How many fish has Badger brought? Can we count that? One, two, three, Four, five, six, seven fish. Do you like to eat fish? Then gopher, there's gopher, and mole. Tunnel up from the ground. We have warm honey nuts. Let's pass them around. There's a flap and a flitter and a flurry in the den when in flutters owl with raven and wren. Where's wren? There's wren way over here. Wren is a tiny bird. We have pears from the tree and herbs to brew tea. And the bear says, wait. Bear mutters and he stutters and he wears a big frown. Bear sighs and he moans and he plops himself down. You have brought yummy treats. You are so nice to share. But me, I have nothing. My cupboards are bare. Look, just a spider web in there. Mouse squeaks. Don't fret. There's enough, dear bear. You don't need any food. You have stories to share. His friends hug him tight. It will be all right. And the bear says, thanks. They lay out their feast on a quilt on the ground and the bear takes a seat while his friends gather round. In a cave in the woods, in a warm, bright lair, the friends feel grateful for their good friend, bear. They pass around platters, they tweet and they chatter, and they all say thanks. The end. Hi everybody, I have Zach with me. Can you say hi? Hi. So with Thanksgiving coming up and people getting together for big meals with lots of friends and family, we are going to do one of our favorites, knife, fork, spoon, spatula. 
We've done this one before, but it's always fun when you have a group of kids. Even older kids love to do this. It can get, as you get faster, it can get super silly and goofy. And so it is definitely one of our favorites and Zach loves this one. So are we ready? We're gonna go slow to start. Here we go. I'm a knife, fork, spoon, spatula, cha cha cha. I'm a knife, fork, spoon, spatula, cha cha cha. I'm a knife, fork, spoon. I'm a knife, fork, spoon. I'm a knife, fork, spoon, spatula, cha cha cha. All right. We're gonna go a little bit faster this time. Are we ready? Okay. I'm a knife, fork, spoon, spatula, cha cha cha. I'm a knife, fork, spoon, spatula, cha cha cha. I'm a knife, fork, spoon. I'm a knife, fork, spoon. I'm a knife, fork, spoon, spatula, cha cha cha. All right, one more time. Let's see how fast we can go. Ready? I'm a knife, fork, spoon, spatula. Cha cha cha. I'm a knife, fork, spoon, spatula. Cha cha cha. I'm a knife, fork, spoon. I'm a knife, fork, spoon. I'm a knife, fork, spoon, spatula. Cha cha cha. Good job. Yeah, oh God, I can go. That's how fast you can go. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So silly. I can go. Candy. Our final story is called Thank You Amu. And this is a Celtica honor book written and illustrated by Oge Mora and it's published by Little Brown and Company. Now, Amu is an Igbo word. Igbo is the language that they speak in parts of Nigeria. Now, Amu means queen, but for the author, it's also what she called her grandmother while growing up. So the book is kind of like, thank you, grandma. On the corner of First Street and Long Street on the very top floor, Amu was cooking a thick red stew in a big fat pot for a nice evening meal. She seasoned and stirred and took a small taste. What a delicious stew, Amu said. Tonight's dinner will surely be the best I have ever had. And you see the delicious smell of the stew going right out her window? With that, Amu put down her spoon and went to read a book before supper. As the thick red stew simmered on the stove, its scrumptious set, scent wafted out the window and out the door, down the hall, toward the street and around the block until, knock, someone was at the door. And when Amu opened it, she saw a little boy. Little boy, Amu exclaimed, what brings you to my home? I was playing with my race car down the hall when I smelled the most delicious smell, the little boy replied. What is it? Thick red stew. Mmm, stew, he sighed. That sounds so yummy. Amu thought for a moment. She was saving her stew for dinner, but she had made quite a bit. It would not hurt to share. Would you like some? The little boy nodded. And so Amu spooned out some thick red stew from the big pat, fat pot for her nice evening meal. Thank you, Amu, the little boy said and went on his way. With that, Amu closed the door and went back to her book. And as she read, her thick red stew scrumptious scent wafted out the window and out the door, down the hall toward the street and around the block until knock, knock, someone was at the door. When Amu opened the door this time, she saw a police officer. Well, Ms. Police Officer, Amu exclaimed, it, what brings you to my house? I was on duty down the street when I smelled the most delicious smell, Miss Police Officer replied. What is it? Thick red stew. Ah, stew, she said, and her mouth watered. That sounds mighty tasty. Amu thought for a moment. There was still enough to share. Would you like some? The police officer nodded. Once again, Amu spooned out some thick red stew from the big fat pot for her nice evening meal. Oh, thank you, Amu, the officer said, and went on her way. 
And so for the second time, Amu closed the door and went back to her book. Sure enough, as she read, her thick red stew scrumptious scent wafted out the window and out the door, down the hall, toward the street, and around the block until... Knock, knock, knock. This time there's three knocks on the door. Again, someone was at Amu's door, and when she opened it, she saw... A hot dog vendor. Mr. Hot Dog Vendor, Amu exclaimed. What brings you to my home? I was selling my hot dogs down the block when I smelled the most delicious smell, Mr. Hot Dog Vendor replied. What is it? Thick red stew. Ooh, stew, the vendor licked his lips. That sounds quite delectable. He probably gets tired of eating hot dogs every day, don't you think? It's probably why he wants some stew. So Amu spooned out some thick red stew from the big fat pot for her nice evening meal. Thank you, Amu, the hot dog vendor said and went on his way. And throughout the day, people from all across the neighborhood knocked on Amu's door. She fed a shop owner, a cab driver, a doctor, an actor, a lawyer, a dancer, a baker, an artist, a singer, an athlete, a bus driver, a construction worker, and even the mayor stopped by. And each time they knocked, Amu shared. Soon the sky darkened, the street lights brightened, and it was finally time for dinner. But when Amu opened her big fat pot of thick red stew for her nice evening meal, Amu sniffled, there goes the best dinner I ever had. Sorry and blue, she sat at the table with her empty pot until knock, 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 knock. Who could that be, Amu wondered. And when she opened her door, she saw the little boy, the police officer, the hot dog vendor, the shop owner, the cab driver, the doctor, the actor, the lawyer, the dancer, the baker. Why, everyone she had shared her stew with that day was at her door. I'm sorry, everyone, Amu sighed. My thick red stew is all gone. I have nothing left to share. The little boy tugged at Amu's sleeve. Don't worry, Amu. We are not here to ask. We are here to give. And the police officer carried in a fresh salad. The mayor entered with a roast chicken. The baker brought a collection of sweet goodies and even the little boy presented Amu with something special in a red and shiny red envelope. Everyone who had knocked on Amu's door that day squeezed inside her tiny apartment and together they ate, danced, and celebrated while Amu's big fat pot of thick red stew was empty. Her heart was full of happiness and love. And the dinner was the best she had ever had. And what did it say in the shiny red envelope? There's a note from the little boy that says, thank you, Amu. It was so nice to write a thank you note. So maybe when you go visit family or friends over the holidays or anytime, you can take a note that says thank you to them. So Zach and I are gonna do a really easy thank you song. Um, it has no motions, but really easy words. It's really easy to learn. And then it's a great way to talk about things that you're thankful for, especially with Thanksgiving coming up. So it goes, I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful for my friends. I'm thankful for the things I have. The thank yous never end. What are you thankful for? What are you thankful for? What are you thankful for? So what are some things you're thankful for, Zach? I'm thankful for my Grammy. For your Grammy? I'm very thankful for Grammy, too. What else are you thankful for? I'm thankful for you and for your brothers and your sister. Okay. You know what I want to okay, go go? What? A house. I'm thankful for our house too. Can we sing the song one more time? I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful for my friends. 
I'm thankful for the things I have, the thank yous never end. What are you thankful for? What are you thankful for? What are you thankful for? Good job. Great job, everybody. Well, story time's almost over. All we have left to do is to sing our goodbye song. Now, our goodbye song is a lot like our hello song, but instead of singing hello, we're going to sing goodbye. So to do goodbye, you put your hand up like this, and you just wave goodbye. That's how you say goodbye in American Sign Language. Now, do you remember friends? Our pointer fingers are best friends, and they give each other hugs. So here we go. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. It's time to say goodbye. One more time. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. It's time to say goodbye. Thank you so much for watching Storytime Anytime. Be sure to hit subscribe to our channel and also follow the Bath Township Public Library on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram.